The conflict between Ukraine and Russia has unexpectedly expanded in scale. The war has spread beyond Ukraine's borders into Russian territory. An uncontrollable wave of conflict has begun to spread beyond Russia's borders and into the interior. Russian cities and towns witnessed the dire effects of the war. Ukrainian troops even attempted to infiltrate deep into Russian territory, launching attacks on strategic points. This week in particular has been a very active and busy week for Russia. Today's attack increased this intensity even more, drawing attention to Ukraine. At 0320, the Ukrainian Security Service's drone army attacked a Russian fuel terminal in the Baltic Sea. This is one of Russia's longest-range strikes in a growing effort to damage its war economy. It also follows a recent drone strike on an oil terminal in St. Petersburg and on a gunpowder producer and oil depot in the Bryansk region on the border with eastern Ukraine. The drone strike on the Ust Luga complex near St. Petersburg resulted in a large-scale fire at the fuel terminal. Following the fire, a state of emergency was declared, and a large number of fire brigades were dispatched to the area. The fire brigade evacuated the facility and tried to fight the fire. However, the response was insufficient as the flames completely engulfed the fuel terminal. A 100-cubic-meter cistern is known to have burned. In addition, this grave attack was widely reported on social networks, with locals posting about the fire. On social media, Local citizens claimed that a so-called high state of alert had been declared. Russian news outlet Shot reported on Telegram that residents heard the sound of a drone followed by multiple explosions. St. Petersburg-based news outlet Fontanka reported that at least two drones were seen in the sky flying towards St. Petersburg before the fire at the terminal was reported. Three large international tankers were near the fire, but no damage was reported, Fontanka said. Russian news outlet Baza, known for its links to security services, published images on Telegram of large flames rising into the sky above what appeared to be an industrial complex. In a video shared on social media in the early hours, workers can be seen fleeing from the Tower of Flames. Ukraine's attack has apparently caused economic losses and damaged the logistics chain that supplies fuel to the Russian military. However, Novatech, the owner of the fuel terminal in Ustluga and Russia's second-largest natural gas producer, has tried to paint a more positive picture. Novatech claimed that work there had been halted and that the fire was under control. It is unclear how long the disruption will last, how many tankers will have to idle outside the port, and what the knock-on effect on international energy markets will be. Following the attack by the Ukrainian Security Service, all tankers near the terminal moved offshore, and their loading was disrupted. So what do we know about the terminal at the all-season port on the Russian side of the Gulf of Finland, about 170 kilometers west of St. Petersburg, and 35 kilometers from the Estonian border? According to Novatek's website, the U.S. Luga complex, commissioned in 2013, converts stable gas condensate into light and heavy naphtha, jet fuel, fuel oil, and diesel. Ust Luga is an important node in Russia's energy export system and includes a gas processing plant and a major port for the transportation of oil products abroad. According to the latest available data, Novatek processed 3.4 million tons of stable gas condensate at the complex in the first half of 2023, up 0.6% year-on-year. Last year, Novatech converted 7 million tons of fixed gas condensate into fuel at the complex. Meanwhile, Ukraine's attempt to transfer the war to Russian territory continues at full speed. Ukrainian drones carried out a late-night attack on a military factory in the Tula region. The Russians claimed that a drone was shot down there, but videos describing the attack began circulating on the Internet. Numerous Russian telegram channels reported loud explosions and fire on the factory premises. Later, it was reported on the internet that drones had attacked the Shchaglovsky Val military facility where they were assembling the Panzer S and Panzer S-1 anti-aircraft missile systems. It is known from open sources that Shchaglovsky Val is one of the largest enterprises in Russia's defense industry. The plant is engaged in the development of guided weapons, air defense systems, rapid-fire artillery and infantry weapons for the ground forces. 
the plant also modernizes old weapons. In addition, Russians claimed that explosions were also heard in Russia's Oryol and Smolensk regions overnight. For the third night in a row, explosions echoed in the city of Klintsi, in the Bryansk region. The Russians claimed that the air defense systems were supposedly operational. So what does the Russian Defense Ministry say about these attacks? The Oryol, Tula, and Smolensk districts were reportedly the targets of drone strikes that were successfully repulsed by the Russian Defense Ministry. Nothing has been reported regarding any damage or ramifications that may have occurred. There is no mention of this occurrence in the narrative provided by the Russian Defense Ministry regarding the Leningrad region, which is the location where a gas terminal caught fire. In conclusion, Ukraine's armed forces are unafraid to confront Russia, as their domestic industry is capable of developing drones and missiles that are able to strike targets hundreds of kilometers distant. These strikes may be carried out in the air, on land, and at sea. While this is going on, Ukraine is demonstrating an increasing level of proficiency in targeting high-value Russian targets through its offensive operation. For the purpose of disrupting Russia's supply of weaponry to the front lines and complicating the distribution of fuel that is necessary to keep armored vehicles and other equipment functioning in tough winter circumstances, Ukraine has launched drone strikes against oil refineries and other Russian infrastructure. A representative for the Ukrainian military intelligence agency named Andrei Yusov stated that when you are dealing with an oil refinery that, among other things, also supplies oil to the occupying power, it creates logistical difficulties for them. On the other hand, the recent successful offensive that Ukraine has been conducting comes at a time when the country is experiencing a difficult situation, since aid shipments from the United States and the European Union have been halted. Additionally, as part of its ongoing efforts to reorganize its economy in order to better support the war effort, Russia has boosted the manufacture of missiles and civilian drones. According to Vadim Skibitsky, the deputy chief of Ukraine's military intelligence, Russia has been concentrating its recent operations on causing damage to Ukrainian military infrastructure in order to reduce Russia's capacity to respond. Skibitsky reported that Russia is now capable of producing up to 130 strategic missiles per month and nearly 2 million artillery shells through the year 2023. This will strengthen Russia's war effort at a time when Kiev is having difficulty acquiring ammunition from Western partners who do not have the capacity to produce such quantities. Ukraine's stockpiles of air defense missiles, which it mostly purchases from the West, are also being put under pressure as a result of Russia's intensive aerial bombardments with missiles and drones. As we can see, a great power duel is taking place between the two sides. We are waiting to see who will be the winner of this duel. We will wait and see. Thank you for watching us.